the Eastern Regional Final. So let's pick it up right now. Welcome to the fifth annual Pepsi-Cola NBA Eastern Regional Hot Shot Competition. Within a one minute time period, the competition involves shooting baskets from five hot spots marked on one half of a basketball court. This shot from 24 feet away is worth five points. And then from right of the lane from 21 feet, it would be worth four points. From 15 feet left of the lane, this shot registers three points. Left baseline, 15 feet from the hoop, three points. And then on the other baseline area, 12 feet from the basket, good for two points. Each contestant can take two layups worth two points each as they have their shooting, dribbling, rebounding, and speed all tested in this competition. And now the girls, 9 to 12-year-olds. This is Susan Dean from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, representing the Philadelphia 76ers with 33 seconds. She has 57 points. She needs 60. And now one more shot, and this will do it. Susan Dean has won the girls 9 to 12. Last year, she was a girls 9 to 12 year old national champion. She plays guard on the St. Gabriel's basketball team and averages 10 points per game. Her favorite players, Kelly Trapuca, Maurice Cheeks, and the doctor, Julius Irving. As Susan Dean will move into the finals from St. Gabriel's in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. This is Sean Miller from Elwood City, Pennsylvania, representing the Cleveland Cavaliers. This sixth grader has an A average in school. He's an excellent ball handler, and we asked Sean if his ball handling helps his shooting. Well, yeah, it helps me. When I go in the game, I, I never want to do any fancy stuff. I just want to beat, beat the guy that I'm guarding with a crossover and spin move. I don't want to be known as like a hot shot or a show off or anything like that. He needs 81 to win, and we have him with 71, 38 seconds. Sean Miller, who plays point guard on his school's basketball team, averages 23 points a game. His favorite basketball player is Kyle Macy of the Phoenix Suns, as he just won it with that shot. Sean Miller with 85 points. Sean Miller in the competition of boys 9 to 12. 18 seconds. Boy, is he really zeroing in. 94 as he continues to hit that shot. 97. 100. And Sean Miller has now hit 11 in a row. This is Diane McGraw, representing the Philadelphia 76ers from Archbald, Pennsylvania. She has already won as we pick up the competition with 16 seconds to go. Diane's brother, John McGraw, was last year's boys 16 to 18 year old national hotshot champion. Her favorite basketball player is the doctor, Julius Irving. She says he's the most exciting player in the league. She's 14 years old and she's won it. This is Joe Reno of Archbald, Pennsylvania. We asked Joe, a former national champion, how important it is to win. If I win, it's great. Get your name in the Hall of Fame. If, if, but if I lose, if I do lose, it's still all right because I already have won the championship. And as Joe mentioned, the hotshot winners are put into the Basketball Hall of Fame, and he's already won the competition. Joe Reno, 14 years of age. He has 99. Now, as he shoots here, he gets a bonus because he shot from all five hot spots and also hits the four-pointer for 106 points. Joe Reno, who is one of three youths from Archibald, Pennsylvania, to be in the Hot Shot National Championships for the second consecutive year. He moves into the finals. And here comes his sister, Lori Reno, 16 years old, the 11th grade, and she has already won as we pick it up with 20 seconds to go. Lori and Joe are the first brother and sister ever to reach the national championship final. She's representing the Philadelphia 76ers. Her favorite basketball player is Larry Bird for his determination and winning attitude. Lori Reno from Bishop O'Hara High School in Archbald, Pennsylvania. In the boys, 16 to 18 year old competition, this is David Malicki from Amsterdam, New York. He needs 70 to win, and with his next shot, he can win it. A four-pointer, David Malicki, and Malicki wins. He's representing the New York Knicks. He's 16 years old. He maintains a 91 average in school, and he's also the class president. 
his favorite basketball player Larry Bird because he's a team player and he isn't selfish he's a good passer and complete ball player he uses the fundamentals David Malicki from Bishop Scully High School he's in the 10th grade and he tries a five-pointer at the end and Dave Malicki moves into the national championships and here are this year's Eastern Conference Pepsi-Cola NBA hotshot champions with National Hotshot Director of the Big O, Oscar Robertson. Join us next Sunday for more Hotshot competition. Well, John Madden may have worked harder this week than he ever had because he's been getting ready to look at the inside look at the NFL draft, and he'll be back with Brent Musburger at the CBS Sports Desk in a moment as the NBA on CBS will continue after this word from your local state. Play NBA, NBA hotshot competition, and I don't know about you, Bill, but the more I watch these youngsters play, I just can't get over how good they are. And today, we're going to have the national championships. Let's join him now and watch. Welcome to the fifth annual Pepsi-Cola NBA Hotshot National Championships. Within a one-minute time period, Hotshot involves shooting baskets from five hotspots marked on half of a basketball court. The competition tests the youngsters' speed, shooting, dribbling, and rebounding ability. This shot from 24 feet is good for five points. And then right of the lane from 21 feet is worth four points. This shot 15 feet left of the lane registers three points. Left baseline, 15 feet from the hoop, three points. On the other baseline, 12 feet from the basket, good for two points. Each contestant may take two layups worth two points each. A bonus of three points is awarded for attempting shots from all five hotspots. This is Kelly Cole from Milwaukee, Oregon, the girls' 9 to 12-year-old division, and she has already won the competition. She's a seventh grader, and she plays guard on the school's basketball team, and Kelly Cole is our girls' 9 to 12 hotshot national champion. Phil Harwell from Brush Prairie, Washington. We asked him what it would mean to win. Oh man, if I win, hey, that would that's just my dream come true. I always wanted to do this. Ever since I've been in Hot Shot, I always wanted to make the Nationals. In the first year, well, I guess I could have practiced a little more. In the second year, I came back, and I went to the Western Conference, and I lost. Now this year, I'm fighting strong, and I hope to win. He needs 10 points to win, and now has cut it down to 109, 117. Phil, a seventh grader from Brush Prairie, Washington. And now with this next shot, he can win it, the three-pointer, and he has. Phil Harwell, whose favorite basketball player is Magic Johnson. And now six in a row. Phil Harwell is our boys' 9 to 12 hot shot national champion. This is Diane McGraw from Archbald, Pennsylvania, representing the Philadelphia 76ers. She's already won. She had to beat 80 coming into the competition. She's an A student. And Diane's brother, John McGraw, was last year's boys 16 to 18-year-old champion. Her favorite basketball player, Dr. J. And Diane McGraw is our girls 13 to 15 hotshot national champion. She's hit five in a row. This is Mickey Schulke from Bothell, Washington, representing the Seattle Supersonics. After two rounds, he had 80 points. He now has 104 as we pick up the competition with 20 seconds to go. He holds a hotshot national record at a national competition with 140 points. He was a runner-up to Joe Reno in 1979, the national champ beating Reno in 1980 and competing against him again in the Hot Shot Finals. Schalke now with 119 points. And that's what Joe Reno has to beat. Joe Reno from Archbald, Pennsylvania. And look at this, find a five-pointer. And that gets him off in very good fashion. As you can see, when we joined the competition, you need 41 points to win. He has his work cut out for him. This is the third consecutive year that Joe has opposed Mickey Schulke in the National Hot Shot Championships. As we said, he won in 79, while Mickey won in 1980. He really has a long ways to go. That's five in a row now for Joe Reno. But look at the time. He's really going to have to hustle in order to catch Mickey Schulke. That is eight in a row. Now he has the two-point layup. Down nine points. Ten in a row. He may do a jet. Uh-oh, that's going to hurt him. The two-pointer, he's going to have to hurry now. He's going to have to really hurry. And that's going to cut it to one pointer. He's got to hit this three pointer to win, and he does. Joe Reno has won his second National Hot Shot Championship. 
Lisa Pesch of Salem, Oregon. As we pick up the competition, she's already won. She had to beat 81. She's a 10th grader representing the Portland Trail Blazers. She plays guard on the school basketball team, also plays the flute and piano, and her favorite player is Walter Davis of the Phoenix Suns. Lisa Pesch is our girls 16-18 hotshot champion. Brent Stellick from Portland, Oregon, of the boys 16 to 18 year old division. He comes in already tied. This would win it for him. He still hasn't won it. Brent Stellick must get one, and now he has won the competition representing the Portland Trail Blazers. He plays guard on the school's basketball team, averaging 11 points a game. His favorite basketball player is Billy Ray Bates. Brent Stellick is our 16 to 18 year old boys hotshot national champion. And that concludes this year's Pepsi-Cola NBA Hotshot National Championships. Alongside our winners, the Hotshot National Director, the Big O, Oscar Robertson. How about that duel between Schulke and Reno? Sandy Grossman, our director, responsible for all those pictures and getting it all edited down. And just wish the very best to all those young kids as another national championship has been completed. We're going to be going to New York and join Brett Musburger in just a moment at the CBS Sports Desk. And he has Shooting young basketball players from Archibald will showcase their talents on national television in the very near future as they compete in the Hot Shot Contest to be aired during broadcast of NBA games on CBS. An exciting prospect, but nothing new to the folks in Archibald. An amazing record the tiny town of Archibald has racked up in the NBA Pepsi-sponsored Hot Shot competition. Every year, more than three million youths from across the country start out in regional eliminations. And in the three years since Father Patrick McDowell started these kids shooting here at the St. Thomas Gym, this community of 6,000 has turned out five national champions. This year's Eastern Conference Finals will be played Sunday afternoon in Philadelphia at halftime of the Sixers-Boston Celtics game. The winners advancing to the national championships. Of the 24 kids nationwide still alive in the competition, five come from right here in Archibald. What's your secret? I mean, what do you tell these kids that uh, enables five kids to go to the national semifinals? Well, well Doug, it's, uh, it's a combination of hard work and, and dedication. And uh, I would say just give them middle confidence in themselves. And, uh, and again, it's, a, it's, it's prestigious. Uh, the kids really want to win. Uh, it started back in 79, and it's been going on ever since. And sometimes it amazes me how hard these kids work. Rocky's son, Joe, goes after his third national championship this year. He'll be joined at Sunday's semifinals by Diane McGraw, also a defending champion, Lori Reno, a national runner-up last year, and newcomers Mike Hughes and Sue Bolkavich. Last year, you won the national championship. Going into the finals there, what was running through your mind? I mean, it's got to be an exciting time, but uh, were you scared at all? Oh, yeah. Like, I was really nervous, but if you just like keep your head, you know what to do. Joe? two-time national champion, one-time runner-up. This is getting old hat for you. Oh, yeah. It's probably my last year, though. Okay, Joe, you're a freshman right now at Bishop O'Hara High School. You have a, a pretty major decision ahead of you. I guess you have to decide whether you want to continue with hot shots or play high school basketball. Well, I think I had four years enough. I'm going to play varsity basketball, I think. I'd like to uh, end that four years as a three-time champ, huh? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Highlights of the Eastern Conference Finals will be shown on tape delay at halftime of an upcoming NBA game on CBS. Douglas Sells, New Scene, 22 Sports. <laughs> A year of hard work climaxed last Sunday in Phoenix, Arizona, where the hotshot competition finals were taking place. Joe and Lori Reno, a brother and sister act from Archibald, competed in the finals for the second consecutive year. Every level of competition gets even harder. And this time it was real hard. There's a lot of upsets out there in the West, and I didn't, really didn't know what was going to happen, but fortunately I won. Joe last year was the hotshot 9 to 12 age group winner. This year, he scored a total of 123 points and repeated as the national champion, this time of the 13 to 15 group. Laurie, after a disappointing loss last year in the finals, bounced back this time to win the 16 to 18 group. Their father and coach, Frank Reno, worked with both Joe and Laurie for many hours, practicing and working out strategy. They go seven days a week, sometimes two and three practices a day, at least, uh, I would say, an average of uh, 
10 to 15, 15 hours a week or more of practice, not counting uh, what they practice in their own back garden. This will be Joe's last year of hot shots because next year he will take his skills to the Bishop O'Hara varsity basketball team. But for now, Joe and Lori Reno are the nation's best hot shot competitor and the co-WNEP TV Sports Stars of the Week. And a little something extra, the Renos will be on Good Morning America sometime in the month of May. Runners up this week, well, Paul Ross of the University of Scranton, Chris Curran, a pitcher at Bishop Hafey, Jeff Brandt from Danville, he won the Penn Relays, Jeff DeStatish of Nana Cook, and Mary Beth Bowler of Kings. Put the way you want without waiting. Special... Well, Joe invited us to watch Good Morning America this morning, and he said start at 7.30 because he wasn't sure of the time last night, so we kept looking, but we finally saw Arch Bowl represented on Good Morning America today. I assume you're talking about you saw it on your Betamax. I know you weren't <laughs> up at that time. I was up at that time, You must time, have my taped friend. that Betamax. No, no, no. A couple of former sports stars, remember? That's right. Well, hard as it may be to believe there is life after our Sports Star of the Week award, Joe and Lori Reno, the brother and sister basketball act from Archbold, were interviewed today on Good Morning America. Frank Gifford talked to the Renos about their recent national titles in the NBA hotshot competition. That competition requires the youngsters to make baskets from various points on the floor. The Renos in their respective age groups beat everyone else in the nation. They'll receive more honors Monday when Archbold Post 869 presents the Renos with accommodations. You'll be able to see the Reno's winning performances Sunday afternoon during halftime of the NBA playoffs. Last night, it was the Lakers winning game two of their Western final. They led by 12, but number 34, Mike Mitchell, brings the Spurs back. That put them ahead, 79-70. I've learned a lot about plants over there. I don't know what you have there, but I would imagine it was a great day for golf. It was a super day for golf, and we have a super team in our own oh, backyard. Do. That's yeah. right. The Kings golf team is getting ready to hell. Maybe, maybe not. What we're talking about is the New York Islanders' three games to none lead, and the Philadelphia Phillies moved over the five. Well, they are the hottest of the hot shots, and they come from Archibald. <laughs> Meet Lori and Joe Reno. Lori is a senior at Bishop O'Hara, while Joe is in the ninth grade. They are the best at what they do, and what they do is score baskets. The object is to get the most, uh, who could get the most points in uh, um, three minutes you get. In hot shots, there are six spots from which you get to shoot, ranging from five points for a 24-footer to two points for a layup, plus a three-point bonus if you shoot from all the spots. But it is no coincidence that five youngsters from Archibald competed in the National Hot Shot Contest. You see, Joe and Lori's father, Rocky Reno, devised a way to win. Well, my father um, set up a, a plan, a way we do it, and we usually go to one spot, the D3, and that's, we just keep going back to that one. But that's not the only reason these two are so good. There's a lot of work and practicing, practice three hours, maybe more, whenever we can. Well, if you can teach them, Maybe, maybe. What were the age groups again? Nine through 18? Darn. Laurie is retiring from competition as the girls' championship, while Joe, who has won the title three out of the four years he's competed, has already looks to be the favorites for next year. Thank you, sir. All right. Good job tonight. The TV station, anything at all for ratings, the candidate. It's 8.53, and we've come out of our studio this morning to ABC's basketball court. Actually, it's in the garage. But we're going to get a chance to see two of our country's youngest and best basketball shots show us their stuff. They're national champions of last month's Pepsi Challenge NBA Hot Shot Competition, and nearly three million young people from schoolyards and playgrounds across the country have taken part on various levels in the past few years. These two winners just happen to be a brother and sister act. Joe Reno is 15, and Laurie Reno is 17. And they hail from Archbald, Pennsylvania, household word, and of course, in your geography. <laughs> How many points did you score? Now, you had one minute. It was the end of the NBA season. You were down in Phoenix. 
you had one minute to score a bunch of points. First, let me show you where the points are scored. I think we have a diagram we can look at. You get a certain amount of points from each hot spot located around the court. Now, how many points did you get, Joe, in your one minute? Uh, I had a 40 last, last minute. 40 in the last minute. And Laurie, what did you get? I had a 30 in my last minute. And you both, of course, being brother and sister, you share a basketball court at home. Uh, now, who wins when you compete against each other? Well, I usually do. <laughs> Joe? <laughs> no. does she? All right, I'll tell you what we're going to do. We don't have time for a full one minute, but we're going to take 30 seconds. Now, we're going to let Laurie go first. You get 30 seconds, and you see how many points you can rack up. You come with me, Joe. Take it away, Laurie. Now this is from 24 feet out, that's for five points. For three points. For four points. For two points, but you can only have two layups in the allotted one minute, and we're just taking 30 seconds. Four points. Biggie. Five points. There it is. How much the total? Let's come on out again. All right, come on, Laurie. Now, what was our total? Oh, seven points. Now, well, television will do that to you, honey. Okay, now, Joe, hang him up there. Take it off now. 30 seconds. For five points. Three points. Three points. Four points. Making Jerry West look like a football player. Three points. Wow, Joe's hot. That's all the layups, because you made one before. Aha, another four points. That's terrific, Joe. Now, we total that up, and in 30 seconds, Joe. And Joe, you had 21 points. The winner today, but I got a feeling it doesn't always go that way. Uh, you know, we have a former basketball star right here on ABC's Good Morning America, Joan well, London. Well, whistleblower anyway. <laughs> oh, I want to ask you, though, how much do you practice? About three hours a day or more, whenever we can. Three hours a day. How do you get the time to do all that? Is it just concentrating on basketball? What about homework and all that? Well... Hot shot was the most important thing to me at that time. Now homework is. <laughs> uh -huh. And you got to continue. The, you've won now. This is your third title and Lori's first title. Are you going to continue on in the program? No, it's my last year. And how about you? You going to go out for the basketball team? Yeah. Good. Otherwise, you want to be a pro player? <laughs> Hopefully. Oh. <laughs> Hang into the studies there, too. You too, Lori. Really fun. You guys are great. Terrific players. We're going to test you a little bit. Yeah, I'm here. I'm here to challenge you. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'll take Lori. A little half court. <laughs> All right. Who goes first? Who goes first? I get one. All right. Well, so I want to first of all just say, say it's been just terrific oh, having you fun. here all week. David is going to be back tomorrow, and we're going to have a, a more on our series. My parents don't understand me. Come back again, okay? Oh, I love to. And Joan, it's been great being with you. And tomorrow. Catherine Crosby will be here. She'll tell us about her late husband, Bing Crosby, and Julia Child will make a great summer classic treat, the banana split. You ready? You're on. Go out and have a good day. Here Mark. we go. I get... take a look at the first half highlights. Let me give you some more insight. Where does future NBA talent get a start? Well, if you watch the NBA hotshot competition of the upcoming weeks on CBS, don't be surprised if you hear an awful lot about a small town in Pennsylvania. Our Dick Stockton found a surplus of talent there a few short weeks ago. 
What you are watching are contestants in the Pepsi Challenge NBA Hot Shot Finals. Each year, over two million youngsters compete, and these are some of the past winners. Here's how it works. Boys and girls have one minute to score as many points as possible from five designated hot spots. Now, what's so special about these youngsters? They are all from the tiny town of Archbold, Pennsylvania. The borough of Archbold is tucked in the northeast section of Pennsylvania, not far from Scranton. It's a once upon a time coal mining town whose greatest claim to fame until recently has been the fact that the largest glacial pothole in the world is found right here. But now, it is the hotshot capital of the world because in the last three years of the 18 champions crowned, five have come from Archbold. And these kids have become the real celebrities around here. Reputations built by people like John McGraw, national champion as a 17-year-old. Michael Polito, national titleist two years ago. And this year's hopefuls, like Joe Reno, two-time hotshot champion in the boys 9 to 12 and 13 to 15 age categories. This year, Joe goes for an unprecedented third national title. And Joe's sister, Lori, a pretty 17-year-old who was the runner-up in the girls 16 to 18 division last year. She'll be trying to win her first national title this year. And Michael Hughes making his first appearance in the boys 9 to 12 category. He's made it all the way to the Eastern Finals. And Susan Volkavage, a similar success story, who's making her first appearance in the girls' 9 to 12 age group. She has a good chance of going all the way. And finally, Diane McGraw, the defending national champion in the girls' 13 to 15. These kids have put Archbold, Pennsylvania on the map. Now, why is this small town with a population of 5,000, this school of St. Thomas Aquinas, with an enrollment of only 200 students, commanded such athletic notoriety? Well, most people say it's through the efforts of these two men, Father Patrick McDowell, formerly of St. Thomas, now in Williamsport, Pennsylvania, and Frank Rocky Reno, current sports moderator. I can't speak for any of the other programs throughout the country, but I kind of doubt that there are any that give more time, any boys or girls who practice harder, work more at it than the boys and girls in Archbold. Kids are very dedicated. Uh, they try hard, and uh, their dedication and hard work is probably beyond, uh, I wouldn't say beyond everybody, but uh, they try to live up to uh, what has happened in the past here. We had a good reputation and they keep it going. They, they don't want to lose it. And each year, the team, the lower team, like the seventh grade team would want to equal or better what the eighth grade team had accomplished. And uh, this is how it all started. And it works through all our programs, whether it's hot, hot shot or girls or, or boys. And whatever the program, there's always strategy involved. Hot Shot is no different. After we get into it a while, you realize that you're not getting as many shots going all around through all the spots as you are getting from one spot. Okay? Now, not every kid can shoot a 24-foot shot and make it consistently, or a 21-foot shot and make it consistently, which would be a four-pointer. But probably the best shot and the best percentage shot would be the 3D, because it's straight out. Uh, there's only a slight angle into the basket. When the ball misses, it still comes back where we can rebound it and get right back out to a, to a spot again or shoot a layup. And uh, we get a lot more shots uh, from that position. If we're hitting, uh, it's great. If we're missing, we, we don't lose an awful lot. We still go around to the spots and pick up our bonuses. But this is the way that we teach the kids, and this is the way we, we try to keep it. So there's considerable practice time and discipline on the court. But let's not forget their top priority as students. Students is, is a very good word for them because they are studious. The children who have been in the Hot Shot program have achieved academically as well as athletically. If I was to uh, go inside the kids, inside their feelings, you could give these kids uh, maybe a million, I wouldn't say a million dollars, but close to it, and it wouldn't mean anything like being out there competing on an NBA court uh, seeing, meeting uh, professional players like Dr. J or Larry Bird or so on, it means an awful lot. Uh, it, it means an awful lot to them later in their lives when they can talk about these things. Of the six titles at stake, these five challengers from Archbold, Pennsylvania continue their quest at the Eastern Conference Final next Sunday. A lot of talent in that one little town, isn't there? Now, the New York Knicks obviously are out after a center, as you could tell by that earlier report. They will go hard for Moses Malone. Now, where Mo is going to wind up playing next...
I'll remind you that the NBA World Championship Series begins Thursday night in either Philadelphia or Boston. And of course, the Los Angeles Lakers have already wrapped up. The Western teams are unbeaten so far in the fifth. Where will the NBA find its future talent? Well, if the scouts are watching, they may want to lean forward right now and take a notice of some of the finest young basketball players in the country as we continue our coverage of the Pepsi Hotshot Championships. We're here for the Eastern Conference Finals of the sixth annual Pepsi Challenge NBA Hotshot Competition. Within a one minute time period, contestants shoot baskets from five hot spots. The toughest shot worth five points from up on top, 24 feet out. That four point shot is from 21 feet most popular spot on the floor the three-pointer right at the foul line then there's the two-pointer from 12 feet and a three-point shot from 15 feet two layups are allowed during the round if a competitor shoots from all five hot spots they're awarded a three-point bonus our first competitor as we pick it up susan bolkovich from archbold pennsylvania and she needs five points to win she's in the eastern conference finals in her first year of competition and one more shot and she will have captured it, and there it is. She's one of five Archbold contestants here at the Eastern Conference Championships, and she's really pouring it on now. Now Susan's gonna try for the bonus points by attempting a shot from all five hot spots, and she has them. Susan Bolkavich, with a great finish, wins the girls' nine to 12 category with a total of 105 points. Now, next up is Michael Hughes. He, too, is from Archbold, Pennsylvania, and he has been really shooting the eyes out of the basket, and on this shot, he has won the Eastern Conference Finals, beating Bobby Burjek of Chicago. But Hughes is on a streak, as you can see here. He's a seventh grader from Valley View Junior and Senior High School, and he's going for his fourth in a row. He has it. Can he make it five from that popular D3 spot? Five in a row. He has plenty of time. Six straight for Michael Hughes. And he wins easily and misses on his seventh attempt, but a fine performance. Now next up is Diane McGraw, one of Archbold's two defending national champions. She's competing in the girls' 13 to 15 age group, and that's what she needs to surpass the leader. And as you can see, all those Archbold kids are trained to shoot from that D3 spot, and her next basket will break the tie, and she has won the title. The girls' Eastern crown for the second year in a row. She's a 10th grader from Bishop O'Hara School, and like all the Archbold kids, representing the Philadelphia 76ers. And she tells us that someday she wants to go to college and study dentistry. Diane McGraw, looking for another national champion, is one step closer. Archbold's other defending champion is Joe Reno, the defending boys titleist back to try for an unprecedented third national title. And he spends a lot of time, even in the winter, shoveling away the snow and practicing. That's dedication for you, and there's no question it gives him quite an edge. And he's going to need it here as he gets set to go and goes for the five-pointer and hits it, his first shot. And he's in a battle with newcomer John McIntyre of Detroit. McIntyre has already completed the round, as you see, with 99. And Joe Reno has 42 seconds now to catch up, and he has yet to miss. Ninth grader from Bishop O'Hara. Someday he'd like to play professional basketball, and can you blame him? And he has really mastered that D3 position. And coming closer now, seven points behind the leader. There's one of the two layups he's allowed. Five points behind, and now two. And if he makes this, he'll beat McIntyre, and he misses the shot. That's the only one he's missed so far. And now he's got it. Joe Reno, over 100. And he has won the boys 13 to 15 age category and still has some more time to run up the score. Joe Reno has only missed one shot incredibly. His last one. And it goes for 114. This is Lori Reno, Joe's older sister. What is it like meeting youngsters from around the country? Well, first of all, over the West, they all have they all wear different whole different style of clothing and it's funny you laugh at them <laughs> and they're just so nice and it's good to have people over there and to write to and everything it's fun Laurie is having quite a good round in fact has already clinched the title over Missy Woodhams who represented the Cleveland Cavaliers Laurie was a national runner-up in her age category last year she's trying to win the title in this her last year of competition and finishes with 92 
This is James Fulmer from Indianapolis, Indiana, representing the Indiana Pacers. As we pick it up right now, you see what Fulmer needs to capture the leader, Kevin Bunner, representing the Philadelphia 76ers. He tries the five-point shot, misses, but he gets the bonus for attempting the shot anyway. And now Fulmer has won it, as you can see, winning the boys 16 to 18 age category, and he finishes with a total now of 114 points. And the national director of Hotshot, Oscar Robertson, joining our Eastern champions. Time now when you see Oscar to take another look back at a man whose NBA star has shined over parts of three different decades. Elvin Hayes is 36 years old, but he's still going strong down in Houston in the Big East. Los Angeles, and we will return after these messages from your local stations. This is CBS. Your life, live it your way. Your day, leave some pleasure for yourself. Your work, give it... As the NBA Championship Series progresses, so does the competition among the NBA hotshots. Take a look now at some young athletes that you may someday see in the NBA. The sixth annual Pepsi Challenge, NBA Hotshot Western Conference Finals. Within a one-minute time limit, the hot shot competition involves shooting baskets from five hot spots. The toughest shot is worth five points. That's from 24 feet out. That four-point shot is from 21 feet out. The most popular spot, left of the key at the foul line, worth three points. The two-point shot to the right, as you see, from 12 feet out, and a three-pointer from 15 feet. Two layups are allowed during the round, and if a competitor shoots from all five hot spots, a three-point bonus. Now, leading off today's competition, Jennifer Johnson of Phoenix, Arizona. What is she doing differently this year? This year, I've established the pattern that most of the hot shotters use. They go back to the three-pointer on the side of the free-throw lane, and that's a good shot for me, and most people have that shot as, a, as their favorite one, and that's helped me a lot. It sure has, and the strategy pays off right there. As you see, Jennifer Johnson has already won the competition, and she is the first Phoenix representative to reach the national championships. Of course, representing the Phoenix Suns, she's on the honor roll in school in the seventh grade at Heard Elementary School, and she says her favorite player is Walter Davis of the Phoenix Suns. No wonder. And she plays the violin and piano, a very well-rounded young lady, and a pretty good hotshot performer as well. Jennifer Johnson. This is Jason Taylor, who's in the boys' 9 to 12 age category. And with a terrific round, Jason is trying to catch up to Ty Baumgartner of Emporia, Kansas. This three-pointer could do it for him, and it does. Jason Taylor in the sixth grade from Portland, Oregon, and he represents the Portland Trail Blazers. And his favorite player is George Gervin, and he is a Western Conference champion. Next up is Janet Franklin, a former national champion in her age category, and Janet's in a real fight this year. In fact, right now, she needs 10 points to win. And she seems to have the range. Janet Franklin in the ninth grade from Arrowhead Junior High School and a prolific letter writer. She writes to all the candidates. Now, she's attempting from the fifth spot, and that attempt gives her the bonus points and the victory as well, enough to move on to the national finals next week against defending champion Diane McGraw of Archbold, Pennsylvania. Janet Franklin finishes with 88 points. In the next competition, the boys' 13 to 15 age category, David Kuzman, who flatly says he expects to win. I feel like I deserve to win because of the hours I put in and the hard practice and just over you know, the past couple of years when I didn't win it two years ago and I just feel like it's my turn there. This is the year of the Coos. Well, the Coos has his hands full. A tough competitor this year going against former boys 9 to 12 national champ Phil Harwell. And there you see he has the championship right there with 13 seconds to go representing the Denver Nuggets David Kuzman of Colorado Springs, Colorado, goes to the finals nationally against Joe Reno when he goes for all the marbles then. Next up is the girls' 16 to 18 competition with Lori Taller from Rancho Cordova, California. And we pick up the action. Lori has already won her trip to the nationals next week where her competition will be Lori Reno of Archbold, Pennsylvania. 
She represents the Golden State Warriors, does Lori Taller, and she's going to try for the five-point shot from 24 feet out, and she hits it for a total of 84. Now, this is Mike Handy from Oakland, California, one of two Bay Area representatives in the national finals this year. And as you can see, Mike has already won the boys' senior division, is now just racking up the points. And these three-pointers are really falling for Mike, who naturally is called by his hotshot buddies, the Handyman. He's representing the Golden State Warriors and someday would like to play professional basketball. He loves that D3 spot, but now he's going to go for a five-pointer from 24 feet out, and it goes for Mike Handy. So there you have the Pepsi Challenge NBA Hotshot Western Champions along with National Director Oscar Robertson. Updating a couple of stories now. Halfway through the Indianapolis 500, Gordon Johncock has overtaken Rick Mears. He is now the leader. Tom Sneva is in third place. Meanwhile, at the Memorial Golf Tournament, we have a four-way tie for first. Floyd. Earlier today, Sweden's Mats Wielander beat Argentina. We will show you that WBA junior featherweight title bout between Palma and Cruz live on CBS Sports Saturday next week. We'll start at 4.30 p.m. along the East Coast. Now, the junior featherweight division, by the way, has a maximum. We'll continue here on CBS Sports Sunday right after these messages from your local stations. The battle continues in the final round of the Kemper Open in Bethesda, Maryland, and the Masters champion. Now, the NBA hotshot competition moves towards its concluding stages today, and Dick Stockton has more on this contest among tomorrow's NBA stars. Welcome to the sixth annual Pepsi Challenge NBA Hotshot National Championships. From three million at the local level, we're down to the 12 finalists. Here are the rules. The hot shot competition involves shooting baskets from these five hot spots within a one minute time period. Two layups are allowed. If a youngster shoots from all five hot spots, there's a three point bonus. In our first competition, Jennifer Johnson of Phoenix, Arizona, who's 12 years old, is charging after Susan Bowl Cabbage of Archbold, Pennsylvania. JJ, who's in the seventh grade, trying to become and has become the first national champion from the Phoenix area. She's quite a student on the honor roll and plays the piano as well as the violin. A big Phoenix Suns fan, her favorite player is Walter Davis. Jennifer Johnson is a champion. Now this is 11-year-old Jason Taylor from Portland, Oregon. That's his score after two rounds. And here's action in the final seconds of the third round. There you see his score, 76. He's attempting the shots from the popular D3 position that you saw in the last week, but he's having trouble scoring. And Jason Taylor, who's in the finals against Michael Hughes of Archbold, Pennsylvania, still has 76 points in this third and final round. That's how he finished. Now, Michael Hughes had that score to beat the 76 of Jason Taylor. And there you see the final seconds of his third and final round. And he's got a way to go now. Trying to pick up the points. The clock is ticking away. He's still trailing by six. And Michael Hughes is still down by three. He better hurry. From the D3 position, he misses, and the time is running out. And Michael Hughes' last attempt is good. So now Michael Hughes has earned a playoff against a confident Jason Taylor. I honestly think that I got, I had a good day and that I practice paid off and that I guess I rated number one in the country that way. And, and that my practice paid off and that you've proved, you've proved something to yourself. He sure did. Michael Hughes finished his round with 24. And as you can see, Jason Taylor had it salted away as he wins the boys 9 to 12 category. In the girls 13 to 15, Janet Franklin of Kansas City and Diane McGraw are in the final for the second year in a row, trailing by six right here. You're watching Janet Franklin, who likes the current rage of video games, try to move in front. She's trailing by one point with a lot of time to go, but she misses right there. Now she goes to the D3 spot to try to wrap it up, and no, she can't do it. And she's having a tough time nailing this thing down. And now the clock is becoming a factor. And look at Janet Franklin. She's now trying from the right side and misses. And now she's really under the pressure. And look at this. She's trying a five-pointer to wrap it up. And she does. Janet Franklin wins the girls 13 to 15 category. Next up is the familiar face of 15-year-old Joe Reno, 
who has easily won an unprecedented third national title. He's also been a national runner-up, and he defeated David Kuzman from Colorado Springs. And if they had a hot shot Hall of Fame, Joe Reno would be in. This is his last year because he'll be playing varsity basketball next year. Now moving along to Lori Reno. And that's the other half of the hot shooting Reno family, Joe's older sister, who's making her last appearance in the girls 16 to 18 category. And of course, she goes out a champion, a national runner up last year. And she has defeated Lori Taller of Rancho Cordova, California. And she has won the girls 16 to 18 championship and goes to Marywood College next year. In the boys 16 to 18 category, this is Michael Handy, who's representing the Golden State Warriors. Now Mike's looking to catch James Fulmer, of Indianapolis, Indiana. Mike's student at Castlemont High School, recently honored by the Oakland City Council for his performance in Hot Shot, and there he has won it with eight seconds to go. Mike is only 16, so we may be seeing more of him in the Hot Shot next year. And a five-pointer goes at the buzzer. The national director of Pepsi Challenge NBA Hot Shot, Oscar Robertson, with our new champions in this, the sixth year of the Hot Shot competition. Congratulations to the winners. Time for the second half now, and Hubie Brown is standing by with Laker coach Pat Riley, so let's go to Hubie. Proud to present Pepsi Challenge NBA Hot Shot. A one-minute race against the clock. Competing in one of six age and sex categories, youngsters try to make as many baskets as possible from the five hot spots you see here. Shot attempts from all hot spots count towards bonus points, and two layups are also allowed. Hot spot A worth two points, 12 feet from the basket on the baseline. Hot spot B is 21 feet away and is worth four points. C, the most difficult shot, is 25 feet away and is worth five. Hot spots D and E, 15 feet away and worth three points each, but D is at the corner of the key while E is on the left baseline. Tonight's competition features the champions from the NBA's Atlantic Division, the Boston Celtics, the Washington Bullets, the Philadelphia 76ers, the New Jersey Nets, and the New York Knicks. In the girls' 9 to 12-year-old category, Amy Garner of the Washington Bullets outpointed Dorothy Sorless of the New Jersey Nets with a three-round score of 98 to 65. Our second competition, boys 9 to 12, featured Dwayne Frazier of the Philadelphia 76ers, who defeated Blake Picknick of the Washington Bullets, 123 to 96. The girls, 13 to 15-year-old category, pitted past national finalist Susan Bolkavage of the 76ers against Marie Ayers of the Bullets. Susan, who made it all the way to the title last year, had some thoughts on her transition. Susan, you were in the national championships last year, and you were a national runner-up. Tell me, what are you doing differently that may help you get to the championships this year? Well, it's a different age group, and you have to work a little bit harder because the kids are a lot bigger and stronger than I am, so it's tougher. Susan's hard work paid off as she hits these three-pointers and attempts from hot spot A to complete her 15-point bonus on the way to her 118 to 96 victory. Mm. Mike Ellis of the Boston Celtics got all he could handle in the boys' 13 to 15-year-old group from Andy Enfield of the Philadelphia 76ers. Although Mike hung on to win 126 to 112, he needed every shot and bonus point here on his third round to match Enfield's blazing third round score of 38 points. Mike's margin of victory was provided by his bonus points. He got five points for attempting shots from all five hot spots and 10 more points for attempting these shots a second time. Of course, he still had to hit all of these shots to offset Enfield's hot shooting. Past national champion Diane McGraw of the 76ers picked up where she left off last year by besting Valerie Whiteman of the Bullets, 119 to 81, in girls 16 to 18 year old. Our final competition featured Robert Fisher of the 76ers challenging Kevin Gillis of Boston. Kevin was only behind by eight points going into the third round, and this three-pointer temporarily gave him the lead. Then he went cold, and although he was gaining his bonus points, his inability to hit these shots gave Fisher a chance to regain the lead. The pressure of competing in an unfamiliar court in front of 15,000 screaming NBA fans can sometimes prove too much, even for the best of shooters. On the other hand, Robert Fisher was on target in this head-to-head -head competition to earn his first Atlantic Division championship. And here they are, the boys' champions, 9 to 12, Dwayne Frazier of Lebanon, Pennsylvania, 13 to 15, Mike Ellis of Plattsburgh, New York, 16 to 18, Robert Fisher of Philadelphia. 
And the girls' champion, 9-12, Amy Garner of Gatesburg, Maryland, 13-15. Susan Bolcabbage of Archibald, Pennsylvania, 16-18. Diane McGraw, also of Archibald. Stay tuned for more exciting ESPN coverage of Pepsi Challenge NBA Hot Shot on upcoming NBA playoff games. Show us what you got.